people always ask me, you know, why write a book about the, about the beauty industry? And I think the beauty industry is really important. This book is meant to open up the field. I may hope to make a statement that there's this, you know, serious middle-aged guy from Harvard Business School taking this industry seriously. And I very much, very, very much hope that other scholars will, will follow and be treated like a serious business, which it is. What surprised you when you started the research? The first thing that surprised me was how difficult it was <laughs> to actually, uh, to, to actually um, get into the industry, to talk to people or to, or to find out about their information. I mean, luckily, I had the advantage of coming from Harvard Business School and people were willing, or many people were willing to, to, to talk to me. Uh, the second thing that surprised me was the scale of the industry. Nobody had ever actually um, figured out the size of the beauty industry until the last 10 years. So when we started adding the numbers up, we saw first how big it was now, but also how dramatically and consistently it had grown over the decades. You have a thesis in, in your book that this, this business both reflects the development of the society but also affects it. The industry does not invent um, concepts of, of gender or of, or of racism or of age, ageism. It interprets them. But by the very act of turning them into brands, it can, it can reinforce societal beliefs. And you can see that mechanism very, very strongly. Things get fixed in the industry through, through branding uh, and marketing. The key figures in this industry have been people who've been attuned to, to trends and fashions and beliefs in each society. And they've had the, the almost magical ability to translate that into, uh, into brands. And that's, that's it's a very exciting thing. It can also be very dangerous because they reflect every aspect of a society. So the beauty industry in the United States, um, for example, was segregated on racial lines, just as was the United States before the 1960s. Um, I argue in the book that companies can not simply interpret but can also lead. And you can see that in the case of some companies now which are having um, senior women in their adverts and really encouraging people to perceive that you can be uh, as beautiful at 75 as you are at, at 25. You have done some research on the center of business history here in Stockholm. Uh, what, what did you find there? Sweden is, is quite interesting for the size of its beauty culture and for the uh, external reputation of, it, of its beauty, of beauty culture. And the center has some really good, good stuff, some good archives. So we found written materials, we found some great photographs, some of which are in the, in, in the book. And they, they were you know, tremendously, uh, tremendously helpful, I think. Do you think it's time to revalue the, the beauty industry. Absolutely, and the, um, you can see the difference at Harvard Business School. Uh, the beauty industry wasn't, wasn't on the agenda of uh, Harvard MBAs 10 years ago. Now it's, if not an industry of choice, it's a very, very serious uh, industry. And the big companies are recruiting on campus and people are going to those interviews. And the reason is it's, it's growth and it's, and it's challenges. And both of these, I think, are, are very serious and very worthy of, of, of you know, someone interested in a serious business career.